But that doesn't matter. They are playing with their heart on their sleeve. Their toughness is evident here in Greenville. And a quick scramble, but Ole Miss will corral the basketball. And into the hands of Madison Scott it goes. The first play of the game, it was Aliyah Mataru for Florida that got a defensive play, and that really sparked the Gators. Will she be that force, that impact today? And it almost tipped in. This one up and in for Rita Ibakwe. Florida's starting five. Faith Duke could be really key for them inside, too. She has a great basketball IQ. Kelly Ray Finley told us that Duke's like a quarterback. She wants to run the offense through that post player, and Duke is a terrific passer. There's going to be a travel on Ole Miss. Ole Miss's lineup right here. We talked about Madison Scott already, but Kennedy Todd Williams has been a nice addition from North Carolina. Spent three seasons there before transferring over. We've seen her run the point guard position as well. I think that you're going to see a rotation between Madison Scott, Kennedy Todd Williams, even Marquisha Davis at times will handle the basketball, start the offense for the Rebels. Point guard by committee after KK Deans went down with an injury earlier in the season. Now the Collins in the corner. Mm. Rolled in and out. Now first meeting, it was Ole Miss that struggled. That it was Florida that struggled to score. Second meeting, it was Ole Miss that struggled to score. Both teams made a comeback, but Ole Miss won both of the games. Marquisha Davis up and elevates, but too much. Igbakwe just short. Another chance for Ole Miss, and this time it finishes. Marquisha Davis. She's their leading scorer at 13.8 points per game. Quee, as Coach Joe calls her, but she's got a great model, a great motor, and a fierce competitor. But there goes Aliyah Batharu. Watch out. Coming off that career-high 35 points. If she can stay on the floor, she's got to stay out of foul trouble. Because she has fouled out of seven games this season. Up and in for Snuna Collins. But as long as Matharu's cooking, you got to let her cook. Jariah Warren with the blast. Her 15th three-pointer of the season. Snuna Collins will take the short corner. Well, you'll let McPhee McEwen, known as Coach Yo. Picked up her 100th win in their last game against Arkansas. Her 100th win at Ole Miss. She has just continued to raise the standard of this program year after year. They went to the Sweet 16 last year. And I think they have defined their identity first as a defensive team and then as an attacking offensive team. Brady Rimdahl with a triple for Florida. That's two on Kennedy Todd Williams. Yeah, the offensive foul there. Kaya Stevenson, the freshman out of Virginia, subs in to replace her. And you got a freshman who's got her hands full of a veteran like Matharu. Florida three for three from behind the arc. This is a two from Matharu. And Bertie Rimdahl love the hustle to get there. You see Marquisha Davis recover and get out in the Yeah, that's great defense. How impressed were you with Ole Miss when they came out of the locker room to practice a couple of days ago? They only had 45 minutes on the court, and I mean, from the time they entered the tunnel, the intensity was there. Yeah, it, it was impressive. It was only yesterday. Oh, Coach, I feel like <laughs> we've been here for a lifetime. And Layla Reynolds going to the basket aggressively and going to the free throw line. And so it's been point guard by committee since K.K. Dean's been out. Yeah, K.K. Dean's actually transferred from Florida to Ole Miss. Got a knee injury against Michigan in the non-conference after six appearances. Now Ole Miss is looking and hunting for paint points where Florida, they can get you from the three-point line. Carissa Richardson 
Count it. Kick this August checks in also for Florida. Greta Bakwe with the offensive rebound. Ooh, Ole Miss can't save it a second time, but they certainly tried. Oh, that was a good defensive interchange by Richardson. Mutharu probing and a foul on the floor. Madison Scott checks back in with Aliyah Mutharu at the free throw line. And went to Texas with her coach Vic Schaefer for a year and now a Florida Gator. Had to sit out last year after transfer. She has been a great pickup for Kelly Ray Finley. She's an experienced point guard. Who can score? We saw that last night. Yeah, 35 times. Layla Reynolds trying to step around Snuna Collins and she's fouled. They didn't light it on fire or anything. Now that'd be something. <laughs> I'm glad no, they did. They yeah, my understanding is that CJ does that before games. Remember, she worked at South Carolina. For Coach Don Staley, and talk about a player. She played at Temple, but plays with passion, coaches with passion. That's what she's bringing to the Gators. The Flores had a great run already, and they want to keep that going, winning two games here at this tournament for the first time since 97. Marquisha Davis. Leilani Correa with her first points. Again, a player that averages 17 a game, only had three last night. There's a bit of tip that Florida has. Mataro on the bench. We haven't seen it yet. And what I expected from both teams was full court pressure. I want to see the full court pressure. That's when it really gets hot. Oh, let's go. One for two from Raquisha Davis. Faith Duke running the floor using the left hand. Marquisha Davis. I think Coach Hill wants them to pick up four for everybody to get mad. She wasn't wasn't too happy about beat, getting beat in transition after a missed free throw. She hasn't broken down to a defensive stance just yeah. yet. <laughs> that will happen. We'll land the first quarter. Absolutely. Mathara getting her own rebound. And the second chance goes. When you see a player like Aliyah Mathara have 35 last night, what do you think of coming into this game on how to stop her? You've got to stunt or you got to trap, but you cannot allow her to freely maneuver getting to the second, third level of the defense. And you can't let her get an offensive board on her own miss. But you watch with the two at the top, the ball screen, you got isolation in the paint. Ole Miss can take the last shot of the quarter. That's an inexperienced freshman there. You got to get the ball with the clock running down to Davis. Alia Matharu has it up to Leilani Correa. The logo three is off the front of the rim, and she took a funny step, too. She's got to recognize when she can't be there and not sacrifice a foul trying to make a hero play. Putting size on Correa. Making every shot that she's attempting tough. Yeah, she's one for five. Marquisha Davis has nine points, and you can tack on a couple more. There's that mid-range. Airquisha. Ernie Kendrick whistled for her first. 
but they only have four second chance points. Actually, Florida has more second chance points than Ole Miss does. A two for Kennedy Todd Williams. Another offensive rebound. And she told us, too, she's seeing the younger players understand it more. They're having to think a little bit less, and it's coming more naturally. Sometimes freshmen come in, and they're afraid to say anything because they don't know what to say. But it, it takes a while to learn it. Kelly Ray Finley calls timeout as Kennedy Todd Williams. I hope, I hope Angel Reese is able to go tomorrow. I gotta believe if she can stay here at the arena, wants to watch her opponent, that who she possibly could play tomorrow, then she's planning on playing. What have you noticed uh, about early on in this game, Coach Beck, tied up at 21 all? Ole Miss is attacking the paint. They're going in the paint to eat, and they, it is paying off. 18 points worth of eating. You see, move around now and talk about the different positions Madison Scott could play. Now inside at the four. Going to be the second foul on Aliyah Matharu. Now, Kelly Ray Finley did trust her yesterday because she was playing so well offensively. They let her play with those two fouls in the first half. And she played very disciplined. Yes. Yeah, she didn't didn't gamble. You know, didn't even make any place questionable. If the offense penetrated in, you could see her with her hands up. She didn't even attempt to block shots so that she could stay available on the offensive end. So you can tell they have that trust between the head coach and her player to stay in there, especially with the veteran that Matharu is. Yeah, she's still out there. Rotten over to Matharu. Pick and roll with Faith. Duke looks good. But if you just float no man's lane, no man's land, that's what you end up with. Well, Zippy Broughton is on the floor in pain right now. Matharu, free throw line. Well, Matharu, three for nine. And Stevenson turned it over. Up ahead to Leilani Correa. Right past the defense. He's number 88 overall in her class. Won back-to-back -back state titles before coming to Ole Miss. be a bad thing for Florida and this will surprise you but sometimes when you've got two scorers on the floor like Correa and Matharu it's hard to decide who to go to with Matharu on the bench in foul trouble Correa knows now she's got to step her game up and she talked about she she knew Ashton Watkins could be in competition for that but she was going to give him a show she she was make sure that it. there was no question no question Korea started SEC play this season with three straight 30-point games. Just a walk in the park. That's a good switch by Carissa Richardson defensively. She switched again. Big girl's moving her feet. She's on Zippy Broughton, and Zippy beats her to the bucket. Are rotating, switching. And, I mean, it's down to the end of the shot clock. But that's when the breakdown happens and the foul is committed. Rattles out and Kennedy Todd Williams will hit the gas. Second foul on Bertie Rimdall. You should be able to outrun the ball handler. And then the Rebels are getting out ahead for the pass. Everybody's in the same same level and you jack up a shot. You didn't run a secondary offense, nor did you get primary offense as well. I think that you've got to run more screens for her because of the switching, and then you can screen and slip, or screen and pop. Zippy Broughton fade away. 
Aaron Kindred with the rebound. Fresh 20. And brought into the basket. You see how they score against this 2-3 zone. Marcusa Davis misses the three. Correa back over to Reynolds. You guys, one thing I'm noticing looking at the stats for Ole Miss, there are no assists yet on the boards for the Rebels. This could be their first one there. So for a team that has so many scores and plays so much unselfish basketball, Carolyn, do you, do you credit that to the Florida defense or just the way that Ole Miss needs to change their offense? I think that Ole Miss needed to change their offense. They got to move the basketball. Quit trying to do so much one-on-one. -on -one. Although that was pretty good. Yeah, that's a good one. And also <laughs> Ole Miss. So now you got Rimdahl and Mataru with three fouls. That could be crucial. Those are two, and especially perimeter threats. It's a 6-0 run by the Rebels. They've outscored Florida in the second quarter, 20-12. to Oh, that's good defense by Sneta Collins. Correa dribbles in the first shot. Correa up to six points. Stoda Collins waiting in the corner. But she understood time and score. She wanted to get two for one. Zippy Broughton taking her time. And again, Florida continuing to drive at the basket. Shoulder surgery over the summer. It took her a little bit longer. Don't worry about what's happening right now. Focus on yourself. I thought that was a great message. And you don't know how much of pr a pressure that takes off a player to hear your coach say, listen, we're not worried about what happened in the past. What you're doing right now is what you we need you to do. And Zippy Broughton is bringing it. Ole Miss can take the last shot of the quarter. Into Davis's hands, now Madison Scott, three seconds. Driving and free throws coming. Madison Scott topples into the cheerleaders. That was a, that was a great, smart decision as the shot clock was running down. Instead of catching it and forcing up a shot over the defense, take the ball to the rim. Draw that foul and get to the free throw line. And she'll be the first one to apologize to those two yeah. ladies when she falls. <laughs> she turned, got up and made sure they were all okay. And Ole Miss really keyed in on her, especially when she was on the floor and Aliyah Mathari was on the bench with three fouls. They knew that they were going to look for Correa and they didn't let the Gators do that. Well, right now, Marquisha Davis has the responsibility of Aliyah Matharu. And there's a travel in the last meeting against Florida. Tonight, just three. But still, Matharu. The acrobatics to finish it. Up to 11. Madison Scott, though, is not just her scoring. Getting on the glass and rebounding as well. It's what the old Opus needs. That was a welcome sign put on the basket for Marquisha Davis. It was so open. There's 16 points now for Marquisha. She's over her season average of 14 a game. Matharo is trying to be an impact from the beginning. See Ryan Howard. Former Kentucky Wildcat, now with the Atlanta Dream, that's on the staff, staff of Kelly Ray Friendly. She has really enjoyed 
on the coaching side. And I think a lot of times players become better players when they've got some experience coaching because they understand what coaches are asking. Yeah, there's Ryan Howard, the former WNBA Rookie of the Year. What an addition, Brooke, for the staff. Yes, and one of the big keys that it, it, that she teaches both posts and guards is how to create some space for themselves. You see Aaliyah Matharu able to get that shot off over Maddie and not get it blocked. So that's one of the big skills that just having a WNBA player on your staff doesn't hurt. Hey, if there's anybody that was good at creating their space, it was Ryan Howard. Or is, I should say, is Ryan Howard. And Ryan Howard is a part of that 2022 SEC Tournament Championship team that beat South Carolina in the final. How fun was it to call games when it was Kentucky playing and it became Ryan time? Oh, Ryan time was a scary time if you weren't Kentucky. <laughs> it was the best time if you were Kentucky. Absolutely. The Florida going to a zone. Going to force Ole Miss. They're going to try to, anyway, make them take perimeter shots. One-handed Marquisha Davis on the reverse. Correa working past Davis, got there, got the offensive board to the free throw line. Marcusa Davis eating up that baseline and getting the reversal. Ooh, the crossover. Thinks she's coming back, and then she attacks. But Correa on that attack, she came up kind of funny. She was rubbing her knee. Against the zone, that SEC on the floor, that's the best place to get the ball. Blocking foul. Very outstanding night for her. 18 points, four rebounds. I still hadn't seen the full court pressure I was expecting to see from both teams. Yeah, that's surprising. I mean, both of these teams... Especially Ole Miss, they hang their hat on their defense. They say dictate and disrupt. A lot of times you see them wearing t-shirts with that on it. Well, and we talked to Coach O in games where the defense wasn't where it needed to be. They were late picking up the ball. She wants her players, as soon as the ball is inbounded, your one-on-one -on -one accountability's got to be there. Florida has not had a field goal, though, in almost three minutes. Still hanging on to a three-point lead. Correa and Matharo on the floor at the same time. Matharo with a take but misses. Marquisha Davis has it for Ole Miss. And Leilani Correa stepping up to take the charge. Three and a half minutes for the Gators without a field goal. Little spin from Atharu, making it fancy. Tyus Singleton. Richardson is battling on the glass. Stevenson seeing a better look too much. There goes Richardson again, unstoppable rebounding the basketball. Florida has brought in Alexia Dizeko for the first time. Three seconds for Korea. Swatted away by Kennedy Todd Williams. It will stay with the Gators, but 0 0.1 seconds on the shot. Just 0 0.1 on the shot clock. It's got to be a tap. Yep. Nope, can't catch it. It'll be a shot clock violation. Florida hasn't been to an SEC semifinal since 1998. And for Ole Miss, they're seeking their third straight SEC semifinal. Foul on Zakaya Stevenson, her second. To get a little rest. Back 
Madison Scott elevating. Dizeko almost had the rebound back to all Miss here. Kennedy Todd Williams taking the baseline. Wanted the foul called. Didn't get that whistle. Eight seconds. Todd Williams for three. No. That's a good, good box out by Faith Duke. Coach O's got some decisions to make. Do you protect Marquisha Davis? Because that fourth quarter can be long the way the officials are calling fouls. This third quarter has been long. That it has. They're both shooting 37% from the floor. Ole Miss is at one of its last eight shots. Madison Scott, pretty. And an offensive foul on Layla Reynolds. You put them all together, all the attributes that they bring, that is a monster in women's basketball. And even more impressive, too, that it's formed into a monster since Kennedy Todd Williams has transferred in. She's figured out the system, figured out her teammates, and fit right in. And now, this is what I'm asking you to do, and Todd Williams bought in. And since then... It's really, it's really paid off for Ole Miss and the success they've had in the SEC season. Yeah, and Kennedy Todd Williams coming over from North Carolina, spent three seasons there, was an all-ACC second-team selection. So she fits into this Ole Miss system. The Faru off the mark. And Duke fouled by Rita Ibakwe. Rebounding is going to help decide... Which one of these teams advances to tomorrow? And right now, Ole Miss plus two in the rebounding margin. Still in a zone. Carter wanting to keep Ole Miss out of the paint. Todd Williams, corner, pocket, called it. Well, she could light it up from three, just the second three of the night for Ole Miss. We are tied at 50. Florida hasn't had a field goal in four minutes, and that will continue. Seven to one run for the Rebels. Adding to it, Kennedy Todd Williams. Correa working around Snow Collins, and that ends a drought of four and a half minutes. That was just the first. Kennedy Todd Williams, that was just the first three. Now the second three made by Ole Miss tonight. Reynolds blocks her from behind. When she talked to Coach Yo when she was looking to transfer about how she wanted to develop. And, and Coach Yo has been very open about, you know, telling Kennedy Todd Williams. At first it was a bit of a struggle. We talked about that. She said, look, I told her in front of the team, we want you to, to succeed. And I think that when you move a player to the point guard spot that has her length, has the ability to handle the basketball, make decisions from there, that just makes her a great all-around player. Ten seconds. Zippy brought into inbound. Faith Duke. The long two. She's got seven. Duke doesn't shoot it often, but when she does, it seems to be at the most opportune time. Ten seconds here. Ole Miss can take the last shot of the quarter. And Madison Scott will take it with one hand to the right. And what Don Staley has done with... A completely new starting lineup this season has been incredible for them to still be undefeated. In that zone. Todd Williams misses. You've got to pick up number two in orange. Your point of attack as soon as she gets the ball because if she gets a full head of steam, you can forget about it. I just love her all-around game, how she gives it on both ends of the floor. A 100% home run 
or a complete failure because you don't want Aliyah Mataru starting the game so early with a foul. Yeah. But she didn't start with the charge, and that sparked her offense. She's got 10 of Florida's 19 second-half points. Last touch by Ole Miss. Tennessee has with a Tamari Key, or South Carolina has with a Camilla Cardoso. Because the ball, you can throw it up where nobody else can get there. I think South Carolina's a little different, though. Camilla Cardoso is 6'7". Yes. That is true, but when you look at on the floor, the advantage that Faith Duke has. Yes, in is this comparable. game, for sure. Carissa Richardson just went over the top of her, though. <laughs> we have seen Richardson be able to produce points when her team has needed it. Mataru! Now, Liam Mataru respects Madison Scott, Madison Scott. Madison Scott again is on Aliyah Mafaru down in the bottom right corner. Zippy Broughton will take it though at the top. Nine points for Zippy. Marquisha Davis with the response. Oh, here we go. Shoot out. This is what you expect in the SEC tournament. Oh, the battle. 50-50 balls. Both teams getting on the floor for the ball. Marquisha Davis hitting the two small. <laughs> Florida's going to slow it down here, take their time. Correa calling bank. Get this, Aliyah Matharu, this is her 14th 20-point game this season. That ties Angel Reese, the SEC Player of the Year, for most 20-point games in the SEC this year. Oh, and Marquisha Davis just wants to keep tacking on to the career high. The switches for Ole Miss have to be on point. Otherwise, Florida can take full advantage. Matharu just a bit light on the shot. Meanwhile, Marquisha Davis for Ole Miss has eight of the Rebels' ten points here in the fourth quarter. Scott rejecting the screen. Oh, Ty, she walked. And then a blocking foul. Or you step up and you say, I'm going to win this game for Aaliyah Matharu. What kind of response does Florida have? We will find out here in the last four minutes and 38 seconds with a semifinal spot on the line. Marquisha Davis just hit those two free throws. She is the fifth Rebel with 30 points in SEC tournament history. She's got 31. You see Kelly Ray Finley talking to Leilani Correa and Layla Reynolds. And then we got to see how Ole Miss and the three-headed monster. Does it change anything for Ole Miss defensively, knowing Aaliyah Matharu is not on the floor and maybe their main option is Correa? With this lineup for Ole Miss, they can switch. That's Madison Scott knowing who she is. Here she comes. That's one of the developments of Scott throughout her career is understanding how good she is. Zippy Broughton's pretty good, too. Oh, yeah. Let her cook. Baseball pass up ahead to Correa on the run. Terrific delivery by Broughton. She has 18 points, Leilani Correa. Whew. I can't even predict this one. Of how it's going to turn up. Well, we'll let you know what happens in two minutes and 19 seconds. Right here for it. Florida's in a bit of a pickle foul-wise. Good to see uh, Liam Matharu back on the bench right now. 
And guys, she spent a lot of time back there getting treatment, training staff, medical staff going back into the locker room to keep checking on her. It was a slow walkout, but she gave me that look in the eye, that head nod, and I was like, okay, she's ready to go. Madison Scott got it back. The rebounding edge, it slants to the Ole Miss Rebels. 14 ties, seven lead changes tonight in this game. Two minutes to go. Taya Singleton. Up and in for Maddie Scott. We saw her hit the back of her head on the floor, but she is back for the Gators. 22 points for her tonight. Nine points in the second half for Madison Scott as she completes the three-point play. Look at Madison Scott all over the glass. And yeah, that ties her season high. 14 boards. If you gotta make your you gotta make your free throws if you want to advance to the semifinals. First time that she's missed, but the offensive board for Madison Scott. 15 boards today. A new season high for Scott. Under 90 seconds to play to decide who's moving on. Oh, turn around, sink it, Scott. A 7-0 run, the largest lead for the Rebels. Ole Miss ball as they have kicked it into high gear here in this fourth quarter. So they've still got to bring it the length of the floor. And the last thing that Ole Miss wants to do is foul. They don't want to stop the clock. And Florida's got to go quick. Down by eight. Marquisha Davis with the steal. And then Florida fouls Davis. The quickness. Marquisha Davis understanding that Florida wanted to get the ball to Leah Matharu. She slipped on the sideline, and Marquisha was the benefactor. And Kelly Ray Finley, I would call a timeout in advance, but you got two. So Florida looking to score quick. Matharu coming around. You got to get a bucket. You don't have time to waste. She'll put up the three. It's going to be blocked by Marquisha Davis. And now Florida's got a foul. Well, you, you get the ball to your best. Ooh. They've got two wins against Florida this year. 44 seconds away from a third. To advance the ball. I almost would save it. If you can get it off a miss. The down screen, pin down. She's got to turn and look for her shot. Ooh, maybe Marquisha Davis doesn't get forgiven <laughs> by Coach O. You expect them to foul right away? They have to. I don't think that Coach O is going to use her timeout either. Ziggy Broughton has fouled out 12 points. Been through so much this season. Having that shoulder surgery this summer. If I'm Ole Miss, I'm pulling everybody off the line and everybody matching up with the Florida Gator. And I'm imploring all of my players, do not foul. Don't even risk it. Marquisha Davis, just not a smart play. Now, Ole Miss has had a foul to give. Yes. I think we saw this game change when Aliyah Matharu went out with that injury. She came down hard, hit her head. And in the second half of this fourth quarter, we have seen Ole Miss just surge. There's about a second difference between the shot clock and the game clock, and Florida is not going to foul. It's been a while since Ole Miss beat the same SEC opponent three times in one season since 1991. But that changes tonight in Greenville. 
The Rebels ending this game. It's so fun. We don't want it to end. I know. This was, <laughs> this has been a good one. Third straight semifinal in the SEC tournament.